Hi guys and welcome to Journey to Journeyman number 9. Once again guys, I can't thank you enough for all the comments, the suggestions, the positive feedback. It's, it's, it's worth its weight in gold and I just can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. There were a couple guys who said that I had too much stick out when I did my threading and they're absolutely right. I should have chucked it up a little bit deeper in the chuck or put a live center in the back end. And that keeps it from flexing when you're doing your, your threading on there. So thanks for those uh, suggestions, guys. On this episode, I take some of that pop can aluminum that I had melted and make a mag base for my dial indicator. And it's just so cool taking scrap or garbage and turning it into a useful piece that you can use on your lathe. But before I give you my order of operations, guys, I'm so excited. Uh, Brad Jacob, who's basement shop guy, um, has allowed me to be part of the guys who are making tools for Keith Spinner's What's in Your Box tool giveaway. And it's just the YouTube guys who do machining are going to make some tools, put them all together, and it's going to be given away. And, and I got chosen to do that, and I'm, I'm so excited about that, guys. Um, for those of you who do not know Brad Jacob, basement shop guy, uh, if I could describe them to you, most Americans, we make hand uh, turkeys at uh, Thanksgiving time when we were in the kindergarten. We trace around our hand and make a little turkey out of it. And we also take a paper plate at Christmas time and make a paper plate and cotton ball Santa. Now, if I can describe Brad to you, when you look at everyone's hand turkey and paper plate Santa Claus, you look through it and you go, one stands out. And I mean, you go, holy cow, that looks like Santa Claus. Or holy cow, that looks like a real turkey. When it comes down to machine restoration, that's who Brad Jacob is. His just stands out. I mean, I bet the manufacturer looks at it and goes, holy cow, I didn't know our machine could look that good. So anyway, that's who he is. If you, if you don't check him out, go check out his channel. It's, uh, he's got some good work on there. All right, now let's take a look at uh, the order of operations for this project. Well, here's what we're going to make. And the dimensions are fairly simple on that. Um, and our order of operations are, we're going to cut the round stock, make it square, mill the flats, drill and tap the hole, cut a slit, mill for the magnets, glue the magnets, and then wink at the ladies. So I decided to take that pop can aluminum I made and make something useful out of it. So I cut a chunk off and uh, faced it off, but here I hit the uh, tool post with that and realized I needed to turn it. And so I needed to get a flat spot on here so I could uh, do some good laying out. I didn't worry about the, the center part of it running true, just so it's flat on there to, to make a nice flat surface to lay out on. It didn't have to be perfect. I just needed to have some spots in there I could lay it out on. And this stuff machines like a dream. So I put the uh, horizontal uh, bandsaw in the vertical mode and uh, laid it out and just gonna cut along the lines here. The vertical way was taking too long so I tried the horizontal way again and it worked better. And here's a rough cut piece ready to get machined up. So I take the rough sawed piece, stick it in a four jaw chuck, and now it's time to get some of the surfaces flat relative to each other. If you notice, I do have my soft jaws on there. And so many of the machinists have said and suggested that I use a softer material like aluminum or plastic or brass to try to machine that to get the feel for it. And I'm here to tell you, machining aluminum is like just wonderful because it actually cuts and it cuts nicely. So once again, they were right.
I know there's a lot of stick out here, but the thing is, is I have the soft jaws on there and have it really tight. And I'm just gonna do very, very light cuts on here just to square up the, the final end here. I do have to say once again, the guys who suggested trying to machine a, a softer material, they're right again because you can really kind of get a feel for what the machine is doing, what the cutter is doing when you're using something that is cutting pretty well. And this aluminum is cutting beautifully. Oops, not enough travel. So see, I didn't get all the material off, so I had to reposition it in the vise and take another whack at it. If, um, if I had to do this again, what I need to do is make sure that it can fit the travel so that you don't have to unchuck and, or unvise or ungrip what you have and regrip it because it's very difficult to get it exactly like it's supposed to be. So I laid out where the hole where the dial indicator goes through it was, laid that out on the table there, and went on and drilled the hole for that. After getting everything milled up, I really liked the rounded edge on it, so I left that instead of squaring it off. Everything fits beautifully and it's uh, nice and square now. Fortunately, this end mill exactly fits the diameter of the rare earth magnet I'm going to use in there. And so now I just kind of slowly plunge it in and try to dig at the depth of that so that the magnet is right flush with the material. Well, to be honest with you guys, I wasn't going to show this footage because, number one, it, it was shot from my iPhone and I had to do a little bit of manipulation to get it in the computer. But also, I made a mistake here. And gosh, that's, that's what this is all about, is showing my mistakes. And one of the things I did was I was just trying to kind of put this in here and scrape the glue off because I glued the magnets in. And I thought, why not just go in there and make sure everything's squared up, um, get the glue off. But what I didn't realize is the everything wasn't quite as tight as it should be on here. And all of a sudden it took a grab and, and made a little small divot in it. Now I, I milled that out as well, but now it's the magnets glued in. And now I went a little bit below on a spot there where it's below the magnet line. So once again, I didn't, didn't want to show this mistake, but... Uh, that's why this footage is in there. I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse here by taking out some of the tooling marks, but uh, I wanted to see how it was going to look. Anyway, um, I was going to use a slitting saw, but I don't have one. I thought I was going to buy one at the time, but I didn't. So what I decided is to make a set screw instead of a slit on there and that uh, drilled and tapped set screw should hold the dial indicator in place. Now I'm not power tapping this but I'm getting it started with uh, 
with power and then I go ahead and start it again to get it real deep in there by hand and then I tap it out with the uh, with tap wrench. So why buy a polishing buffing wheel if you don't use it? So I decided to polish it up and see what it would look like. And guys, you can make that aluminum look like a mirror. Now I know my lathe uses a piece of lead ball down in a set screw to keep it from marring up some threads. So I thought, why don't I use a piece of a lead as well? So I got some lead solder and cut off a little piece of it so that it can fit down in the hole and that will keep it from marring up the the surface of the dial indicator. Also I know that if I would have used a, a slitting saw in there it would put more even pressure around it instead of one place but I had to go with what I had at the time and I just didn't have a slitting saw. Since I know I'm going to be melting more aluminum, that's what I started with. But here are the parts that I cut off. I got a little bag down there of aluminum that I keep with the shavings and the little cutoffs. And that's going to go back into the kiln and be remelted. Hey guys, let me share a couple of lessons learned with you. Um, one of the things that you need to do when you have such a limited travel when you're using a milling attachment on a lathe is make sure you have the full travel before you start cutting, you can chuck your piece in there just a little bit different to give yourself the full travel because then you don't have to remove it, stick it back in and try to get it perfectly squared up like it was and then your bottom will be perfectly smooth. But all in all, I really enjoyed this project. It's a useful piece that I use now and it's wonderful to take scrap pop cans and make something out of it. Guys, thank you so much for your time and watching. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you on the next Journey to Journeyman.